and welcome to Mock the Week. In fact, the second last episode of the last ever series of Mock the Week. I'm Dara Breen. Joining this week are Ed Byrne, Jem Brister and Sean McLaughlin, Angela Barnes, Hugh Dennis and Glenn Moore. We start tonight with a round called If This Is The Answer, What Is The Question? On the board are six categories. Ed, it is your 73rd and final episode. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, not, not because the show is ending, it was going to be your in, uh, final episode anyway. <laughs> Which category would you like? I'll have home news, please, Dara. Your topic is home news. If the answer is three hours, what is the question? How long does an episode of Mock the Week feel when I'm not on it? <laughs> <laughs> Is it what's the world record for the 200-metre breaststroke on land? <laughs> Is it uh, how long did Liz Truss seem like a good idea? <laughs> <laughs> Is it in my local calf? how long is the five-second rule? <laughs> Is it how long I spent trying to convince the dragons to invest in my memory foam toilet seat? <laughs> Is it how long can there be a silence in a Liz Truss interview before she thinks, oh, it's getting a bit awkward now? <laughs> <laughs> Is it, uh, how long does each shot take in tantric snooker? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, cos you've got to fill all the holes mm -hmm. as well. <laughs> <laughs> Is it how long I take to answer yeah. when someone asks me if I want to be their bloody bridesmaid? <laughs> <laughs> Is it, um... In an average episode of Mock the Week, how many hours of jokes about Dara banging Brian Cox don't make the edit? Including <laughs> 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 this one. Yeah, <laughs> it's just two guys who like the night sky. <laughs> <laughs> Is it how long it takes Wallace and Gromit to make breakfast when there's been a power cut? <laughs> Is it, uh, now that the bridge is out, how much longer does the diversion take to get into Crimea? <laughs> you were sensitive about the Russian traffic situation, aren't you? <laughs> is, is it the it... interval time between the Treasury releasing a statement and the Bank of England bailing out the government? <laughs> <laughs> is it since going vegan, how long does it take me to wipe my arse? <laughs> Is it how long does it take to type in my Netflix password using the TV remote? <laughs> Do we have the correct answer? Yeah. Is it how long are we expecting the blackouts to be when they come? Absolutely right. Thank you very much, Ed Byrne. Uh, uh, well, that's my job to do the right answer. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Ed's shaking up the phone. My job to do yeah. the right answer. How long but... will he seethe for now that I've given the right answer? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, the question I was looking for was how long could households face having their power switched off for under emergency plans drawn up by the National Grid? This is the news that in the midst of an energy <clears throat> crisis, one potential scenario involves rolling blackouts uh, of three hours at a time <clears throat> if gas supplies fall short. So how are we going to deal with the energy blackouts? Well, uh, first of all, I'm interested they're called uh, blackouts. Now, they used to be called power cuts, yes. didn't they, or outages, or Liz Truss's winter wonderland. <laughs> <laughs> Plan. Like, I'm quite happy about it because at some point in my life, I must have mentioned in passing that I quite like scented candles. And at last, I'm going to get a chance to use them. And sure, it might be a bit overpowering. I've got a lot of them and I've got the really expensive ones. So if you do come to my house in a power cut, it is going to smell a bit like Gwyneth Paltrow's exposing herself in a pine forest. <laughs> <laughs> There is a way that you can look up whether or not your area is going to have a blackout, and I've got a website. And if you go on the website, and if a website doesn't load, then that means it is your area that's currently. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, don't, I don't get this because they're protecting heat. They want it over light. Yeah, yeah, over electricity. But being dark is way worse than cold. So what? I don't know why. Like no one's ever said, "Oh God, I'd hate to make him in a refrigerated alley." Like what? I don't. <laughs> <think> <laughs> <I'm> just... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We, uh, yeah, we made three hour uh, rolling blackouts because, and this, and the government have, have Liz Trust has said this won't happen, and that's a Liz Trust guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can take that to the bank. <laughs> People are used to a certain standard of living in this country, and we're not going to dial it back. I mean, look, I know that's not the best thing for the environment, but I still fill my kettle all the way to the top with diesel. <laughs> <laughs> 
there were many news reports during the week about how it's affecting other countries. Um, the one about Scandinavia, for example, that apparently people in Scandinavia are using less saunas. And you're going, oh, thank you, I need it explained to me in terms of different racial stereotypes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It does diminish the appeal, though, doesn't it? Because without heat, a sauna is basically just naked people shivering in a shed, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't they just wear clothes in the sauna and turn it down a bit? <laughs> Good plan. Sorry, can you point out, sorry, at the minute of all this, like whatever side, there will be moments where you see me bat out. There is, a, is, fly, there is yeah. a fly who has decided to hover around yeah. me, and that is a kind of a visual metaphor for a show that's almost at the end of its life. <laughs> <laughs> so you will see me lashing out at the fly occasionally well, as well, if well, it is death itself. The, be gone, <laughs> harbinger of doom! <laughs> the, 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 the fly has nowhere to live now that the rats have left the sinking ship. <laughs> <laughs> in other news, who has stepped in for a third time in a fortnight to stabilise the economy? The Bank of England. Thank Bank heavens so they're well, here! It the... was me! You're welcome. Oh, <laughs> the Bank has put in, in addition to the 65 billion purchase of government bonds, it's now going to mm. buy a further 5 billion of index-linked debt. Before we go any further, we should, ought to just, just take a moment and give the Tories a chance, because they've only been in government for 12 years. And I think it's <laughs> typical <laughs> of this sort of left-wing, woke organisation like the Bank of England. <laughs> I have seen a glimpse of the OBR forecast, the long-awaited OBR forecast. It's just a single sheet of paper with a turd emoji on it. <laughs> None of us understand it. That's part of the problem. Because yeah. the economy, basically, is, is like a drunk woman crying outside a nightclub, right? I, I know that something really bad is happening, but I just can't understand what it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Did you get it? No. no I didn't. <laughs> the, the Bank of England do need to step in because the situation's so messed up just financially for everyone across the country. Like, I've, I've realised that renting in a city is so expensive, it would be cheaper for me to just not rent anywhere and instead just try to do an escape room really badly. <laughs> <laughs> I've got loads of money saving tips. Like, I buy scratch cards. Every day I buy a scratch I never win. But I keep them in case one day they change the rules. <laughs> Our, at the moment, uh, our best hope uh, and the current economic plan is to maybe Saudi Arabia will buy the country. Uh, and, <laughs> and then, you know, with proper investment, might get us back into the top five again. And if we're really lucky, break into Europe. That's a football analogy, isn't it? Because they, yeah. And a Brexit joke no, disguised. No, I mean, it okay. really was. Oh, uh, nice we you. peaked. Uh, <laughs> It's why now I'm going to spend the rest of the thing hunting a fly, going, clever girl. Uh. <laughs> uh, moving on, what's going on here? That really is the face of a man who finds sparkling water too spicy. <laughs> That's Michael Gove going, a photographer, yes. Kill him. <laughs> <laughs> is, he, is, is he hearing... Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, sorry. <laughs> it looks like you're both trying to hit me. <laughs> Sorry, fly. Uh, uh, is he currently hearing, you are currently 12th in the queue to be Prime Minister? <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a picture of the demon headmaster being told that Ofsted are on their way. <laughs> <laughs> would, that, would that joke have worked better if the fly wasn't on my head? <laughs> is he going, well, where exactly is the pick-up point? <laughs> <laughs> is this about what one of Liz Truss's um, closest... AIDS or, I don't know, somebody said something about him having... Uh, what was it? A darkness inside him? A darkness in his heart, yes. A darkness, uh, a darkness in his... inside him and it corrupts his soul. So, is he on Grinder or is he...? <laughs> <laughs> or has he just got off Grinder and he's just got on the phone and gone, come over at seven and fill the darkness inside him? <laughs> <laughs> In other news, why will it be expensive to visit Liverpool next May? Oh, it's, it's the Eurovision Song Contest. Yeah, yeah. I think I know an absolutely perfect time to have a rolling blackout in Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone here always impersonates the nil point thing, so do you think there'll be people in Slovakia this time sort of going, he's got six points? <laughs> <laughs> 
were going to, because the accommodation is so expensive, they were saying they were going to build a big campsite, which basically is what Eurovision is. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's crazy that we're even having the event. Like, the Eurovision is probably the most brightly lit event on Earth <laughs> at a time that we're having power outages. <laughs> like, some Latvian gets to dress up like a space pirate and dance about while I'm at home drawing my own pornography. But what... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we were supposed to give you a present for your last appearance. Oh. Yeah, Are you? we we, were, we we sent some to Snappy Snaps, uh, and they got uh, you know you can put as you got a pair of boyfriends with uh, uh, my face on. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's it. I mean, you say you went to Snappy Snaps, you've just been rifling through Brian Cox's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Get that round. What's your Andrew Hugh Andrew? Yeah. Now, we play a round called Join Us in 10 Years from Mock the Week, Where Are They Now? <laughs> this game <laughs> involves Sean and Glenn, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launched a wheel of news, and wherever it chooses to stop, one of our performers will step forward and talk about that subject. OK, here we go. Our first topic, please, let's spin the wheel. And the topic is ageing. Sean. Yeah, uh, well... I'm worried about ageing, of course. I'm 34, so I'm really in the business end of my mid-20s. Um, <laughs> my wife's actually turning 30 soon. She's, she's really struggling with it. She keeps saying things like, I can't be 30, I don't feel like a grown-up. And I'm like, that's not how life works, babe. You know, just cos you don't feel like something doesn't mean you're not something. You know, I don't feel like a tax avoider. It doesn't change what I am. <laughs> The truth is, I'm in my 30s, I'm the happiest I've ever been in my life. The happiest I've ever... Not because my life's improved in any way, shape or form. I've just finally lowered my ambitions enough <laughs> that they fit this. I mean, you think this is what I wanted to be when I was a kid? You think this is what I wanted to look like? L Roll Dahl character on a come down. This is what I wanted to be. <laughs> Lionel Messi's crackhead nephew. I hate my life. <laughs> I thought I was a genius. All through my teens and 20s, I thought I was a genius, despite all... Evidence to the contrary. <laughs> I thought I was a great mind, despite being described by one of my university professors as, and I quote, the worst student I have ever encountered in life or fiction. <laughs> right, fiction. <laughs> but it slips away, youth. Slips away. We have it and it goes. No one knows where it goes. One minute you're 19, you're smoking spliffs in your bedroom, you're saying things like, Kings of Leon can change the world. <laughs> Before you know it, you're 34. Man from EDF Energy's knocking at your door. You're pretending you're Spanish. You don't have to give a meter reader. Yo, it goes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Tom. <laughs> OK, that leaves us with Glenn. Let's see what your topic is. Let's spin the wheel. And the topic is drinking. Um, when I drink, I go by the usual drinking rules, you know, sort of like beer before wine, makes you feel fine, absence before whiskey, please call me an ambulance, the usual. <laughs> I never really thought I drank that much until one day my girlfriend felt the need to ask me if I was over the drink drive limit. And I was like, you know, OK, do you know what? If we're counting one shot of whiskey as over the drink drive limit, then fine, OK? Right, I, I'm, I'm 11 times over the drink drive limit. <laughs> And she got angry at me, told me off. She called me immature. That is what stopped me most. She called me immature. Day of my dog's birthday party. Immature. <laughs> I thought our whole relationship was based on alcohol. The first date we ever went on, it was fueled by drink. Tipsiest date I've ever been on. She was flirting with me in the most tipsy, flirtatious way. She did something called the cherry stem trick. She was eating from this bowl of cherries on the first date, got a cherry stem, put it into her mouth, tied it into a knot with her tongue. It's got very sexual connotations. Then she took things one step further. She put a whole Kinder egg in her mouth, pulled out a fully assembled toy. <laughs> Trying to go the whole year without alcohol was a fun challenge, and now I'm trying to like jazz up sober life in any way I can. Like now, for instance, when I have tea in the mornings, I have black tea and I have milk in a separate shot glass, and I put the shot glass and milk inside the tea and knock it over like a Jaeger bomb. <laughs> it's the only way I can enjoy it. <laughs> you know, my parents tried to cheer me up, took me to Alton Towers to try and cheer me up. I was still miserable there. We had such a miserable time at Alton Towers that after we'd been on the log flume, we bought a photo of a different family's ride. <laughs> Thank you. Well done, very good. Yeah, that round. Points go to Sean McLaughlin. <laughs> Our next.
next round is called Picture of the Week. I show the panel a topical image and ask to tell you what's happening. So, teams, what's going on here? <laughs> is he uh, just powering up the Independatron 3000? <laughs> <laughs> Is this the least sexy scene in Ghost? <laughs> you know, say what you like about Nicola Sturgeon, she really takes her home brewing seriously. <laughs> but she's terrible at hide and seek. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I was behind her all along <laughs> in, in a high vis jacket. <laughs> How did you not see me? I think she's saying, oh, it's incredible to be here. Referendum, referendum, referendum. <laughs> They go, Nicola, can we talk about something else? Certainly. What's interesting is that this valve moves independently of this valve. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. It's on your head. <laughs> oh! Is he gone? Is he gone? He's gone. Oh, you missed Jesus it. Jesus Christ, I even <laughs> punched myself in the face. Uh, this is a sub team which is going to be really irritating. He's, uh, he's sensing something about your body, though. What, my scent? Well, my you're musk, dying you know, inside. Oh, my no. sadness. That's where flies are drawn to yeah. sadness. Uh, <laughs> I feel like drawn to shit. shit. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Trying to be poetic about it. Oh, that, 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 that is the comment of a man who knows this show is coming to an end. Yeah. <laughs> oh, making my first and last appearance <laughs> on the show tonight. <laughs> is she three wheeling? I've been Glenn Moore. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> Every time she turns the wheel, Alex Salmond is stretched a little bit further. <laughs> is she saying, Waza? <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's just trying to intimidate Liz Truss by saying, This is what I made out of the smurf that crossed me. <laughs> <laughs> is he going, She who can turn and open the valve shall become the Queen of Independent mm -hmm. Scotland? <laughs> <laughs> Do they have the correct answer, please? That is Nicola Sturge. Absolutely right. Thank you very much, Hugh. Very good. Yes, this is Scotland's First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, who delivered the keynote speech at the SNP conference this week. What policy was at the forefront of her speech? Nicola Sturgeon wants a referendum for independence. We get it. It's not news. It's like saying, Dara likes space. We know. <laughs> no, Dara told you he needs space. Oh, right, different. <laughs> But she said she wants to call a referendum herself, doesn't she? But, um, but Boris, in one of his last things as Prime Minister, said that that, that uh, was illegal and uh, he should know. <laughs> <laughs> All that Liz Truss needs to do is just for the next year try and make England look as fun as possible. So, like, every time a Scottish person looks over, she's sort of like, OK, right now. <laughs> <laughs> she's also very pissed off, isn't she, that Liz Truss hasn't called her. Yeah, Although I think possibly she has. You know that the call where she picked up and went, hello, and then there was just a very, very long... <laughs> 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 no, 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 must be, yeah, I must have no, no connection there. Uh, well, if she wanted someone to give her a weak pound and then not call her, she'd probably have stuck with Alex Salmond. <laughs> 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 I, how do we know that Liz Truss hasn't tried to... Call her. I mean, all we know about Liz Truss is that she's terrible at everything. So, for all we know, she's just stood there holding her entire landline up, going, mm. Scotland! Mm. And wondering why... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's got a banana to her ear. <laughs> I'm yeah. trying everything over here! Mashing the buttons. Quasi, you try it. He's mashing the buttons. <laughs> Why doesn't that work? It is embarrassing to be ghosted by the least popular person in the UK. <laughs> like, it's like if you, if you got deleted on Facebook by a hot woman in your area. <laughs> it's not news that Nicola Sturgeon detests the Tories. I don't really understand why everyone's so upset about it. And so, for balance, I mean, this is the BBC and we should have balance. I just want to say, I also detest the Tories. We're leaving it out there. Yeah. Great stuff. Oh, man. Talk like that will talk like that will get the show taken off the air. <laughs> <laughs> In other news, this is a great story. Why was man particularly unhappy about a seventy dollar charge on his pay per view bills? Well, this is because apparently his dog yes accidentally downloaded some uh, pay for porn on yep. his TV. <laughs> um, well, you laugh. It's very easily done because when I was on tour, my cockapoo. Uh, downloaded Tinder and made a profile for my husband. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Easy that. It happened. It happened. It was, um, they're a curious animal. 
Ooh. There is... That's not actually the dog in question, although it was a situation similar to that. The dog went to the remote control and managed to order $70 worth of pornography, uh, and after a few minutes, the man rang to complain. Uh, <laughs> and... It wasn't even the dog's fault, was it? It inadvertently went on a site called Give the Dog a Bone. <laughs> Do you reckon... Or did it search rough sex? <laughs> <laughs> Do dogs just call the sex position style? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, yeah, I mean, it's all very well to be told you about this. The dog was just happy to see people who were let onto the bed. <laughs> uh, Look at those people. They're allowed to go upstairs. They're allowed to go upstairs. I want to see more footage of the people going upstairs. Yeah. That's really weird. Hey, That's weird. That guy's wearing a collar as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I find it so dumb when people pay for porn. I have never paid a penny for porn in my life. I've paid a lot of Bosnian marker. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Why would... You pay for flowers when you can get them free on a lamppost. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> when you read the story, like the implication of the coverage is that the man had a wank. Ha well, <laughs> ordered the porn. <laughs> yes, ordered the porn himself and then blamed the dog. And I, why would he even order porn if you've got a dog? You just fuck that. <laughs> This is the one <laughs> after which I'm supposed to give points. <laughs> that is a yeah. joke. I feel like that, if that is the last... That's a shame now we're going to do scenes with, like, see, I would be very happy for that to be the last joke I ever tell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at the end of the... <laughs> the joke that you are ending 17 <laughs> years. <laughs> <laughs> 73 episodes, and this is how you'd like to finish it. Yeah, OK, yeah. <laughs> The point is going to Sean, Jen, and Ed! <laughs> now we come to scenes we'd like to see. So if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, I'll read out this week's topics, then we'll see what our panels can come up with. OK, here we go. The first subject is... Things you wouldn't hear on a news programme. <laughs> Popular Irish comedian Ed Byrne was today arrested for... Is that right, a dog? <laughs> <laughs> Vladimir Putin has expressed his sadness at the death of a former colleague who died tomorrow after falling off a balcony. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm just going to keep rubbing it until he rolls over and falls asleep. Oh, you mean what am I going to do about the next election? <laughs> <laughs> This is Hugh Edwards for Babe Station at the Labour Party conference. <laughs> so the good news is uh, half of the hostages have been released. Uh, the bad news is uh, there was only one hostage. <laughs> <laughs> Bribery on Everest, it's corruption at the highest level. <laughs> There are allegations of doping in junior sports teams. I'm here with the under-11s captain now. Tom, Tom, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Has social media robbed politics of its civility? To discuss this now, we have typical lefty Ramona twat and a gammon face <laughs> article. <laughs> Animal news now. <laughs> Well, joining me here in this field is Peter, who's an expert in parachutes not opening. Now, Peter, how did you get into this profession? <laughs> <laughs> and reports coming in. Oh, apparently, Mock the Week has been cancelled because the BBC has been taken hostage by a bunch of miserable Tory <laughs> can't take a fucking joke. <laughs> Are budget cuts affecting ITV coverage? Let's go over to our political world, education, economic, religious technology correspondent. <laughs> <laughs> and the hunt for the missing bikini model is now over as police say they have discovered a beach body ready body on the beach. <laughs> I would like to apologise for my earlier report from outside the zoo. I truly thought that MILF stood for monkey I'd like to film. <laughs> <laughs> ah. 
Fire at the scented candle factory. This report does contain de-stressing scenes. <laughs> The riot is taking place just over a stone's throw from here. Sit! <laughs> <laughs> ITV News will be back after these messages. I still love you, Susan! And we're back. <laughs> <laughs> Police are appealing for witnesses. If anybody has any information uh, leading to the apprehension of the perpetrators, please call 0800 Snitches Are Bitches. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next topic is... <laughs> Unlikely lines from a children's book. 10% by Christmas? We are absolutely fucked, said the borrowers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tigger, said Piglet, why are you so bouncy? It's methamphetamine. And by the way, <laughs> I've sold your telly. <laughs> Somebody's been eating my porridge, said Mummy Bear. You can have mine, said Daddy Bear. I've just eaten this blonde girl I found in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> what big eyes you have, Grandma. Really? Cos I don't think these drugs are working. <laughs> <laughs> He was off to present yet another TV show in a new adventure for Dara the Explorer. <laughs> As they stood drinking Bovril in a rainy car park, it felt like the end was near for the rail replacement bus children. <laughs> <laughs> Why do all the children laugh at our old-fashioned names? Dick said to Fanny, Volva, Titty and Scrotum the dog. <laughs> We're going on a bear hunt. Cos Simon likes his men big, hairy and in leather chaps. <laughs> the third little pig made his house out of bricks and on the door he put a picture of his penis and a little sign saying, blow this, you hairy bag of shit. <laughs> The Famous Five were in a lot of trouble after a series of IRA bombings... Sorry, the Guildford Four. The Guildford Four were in trouble. <laughs> My name's Paddington, said the bear. I don't give a shit who you are, said Suella. You're going to Rwanda, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's the fly. Have you got it? Yeah! <laughs> No one fucks with me. <laughs> <laughs> and the baby fly said to Mummy Fly, But where's Daddy? <laughs> <laughs> no, said Spot the dog. Don't let me go to Ed Burns' house. He makes me do things. <laughs> We are without the sorting hat today, said Professor Snape, so I'll be filling in, so just stick your head up my ass and I'll tell you what house you're in. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I keep on setting off the metal detectors, said Tintin. <laughs> <laughs> you're a wizard, Harry. Welcome to the KKK. <laughs> And the cat in the hat said goodbye to thing one and thing two as the vet snipped them off and put them in a bin. <laughs> You've gone dark in your old age, haven't you? Hey, is the bear with the marmalade still at the station? Obviously not. It was a live bear in a train station. We killed it. It's dead. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Damn, said Geppetto. If I'd known this would happen, I would have made a wooden prostitute. <laughs> Sean Jenner. And that's the end of the show. This week's winners are Angela Barnes, Hugh Dennis, and Glenn Moore. <laughs> Commiserations to Ed Byrne, Jen Brisker, and Sean McLaughlin. 
Thanks for watching. We'll be back next week with the final Mock the Week ever. I'm Dara Breen. Good night. <laughs>